Okay, so uh, welcome to unit three. And uh, unit three I have entitled Cytotoxic Envenoming the Vipers, Asps, Spitters. So in this unit, by the end of it, the participant will be able to describe, at least state, the common signs and symptoms associated with cytotoxic envenomation or cytotoxic envenoming. So you'll note that uh, throughout this course, I'll be using envenoming and envenomation uh, interchangeably. The participant will also be able to briefly describe and recognize uh, important Zimbabwean snakes, which are associated with serious cytotoxic envenomation. And thirdly, the participant will be able to name two vipers which do not predominantly lead to cytotoxic envenomation. And then fourthly, the participant will be able to state which regions of Zimbabwe the medically important cytotoxic uh, envenoming snakes are found. So let's jump right into it. So when you talk of cytotoxic envenoming or cytotoxic envenomation, as mentioned in Unit 2, we'll be referring to uh, venom or snakes which have got venom which is able to cause serious tissue damage. And the picture which I have here up at the top is an example of what serious cytotoxic envenoming would look like. So the major signs and symptoms or the clinical picture of cytotoxic envenoming or envenomation, there is normally a painful and progressive swelling. And this can vary depending on the type of snake which is involved as well as the amount of venom which a person has received into their body. And sometimes you've got blood-stained tissue fluid. Like when you see here, this is tissue fluid which was blood-stained. And you can get blistering. The blisters could be these huge type of blisters. Or you get the smaller one, as I shall show you in one of the pictures. And you can get bruising. And eventually there can be necrosis or tissue death with gangrene setting in. So cytotoxic envenoming is, is, is quite important because a person can actually lose their limb if uh, they are not attended to. And down here are some of the uh, snakes that we're going to meet, two of them. We have the puff adder, which I said earlier in Unit 2, that was responsible for most uh, snake bites in, uh, uh, in, in Africa and in Zimbabwe as well as well as the Mozambique spitting cobra, which we shall talk about. So concerning uh, a cytotoxic envenoming snakes of Zimbabwe, the vipers are the ones which are normally associated with cytotoxic type of envenomation, of which the puff adder or Betis arietans, this snake, is the one that's responsible for most of them. But we've also got some other uh, snakes belonging to this viper family, including the Gabon adder or Gabon uh, uh, viper, the snouted or night adder. We have got the rhombic night adder, which all have got cytotoxic venom. So there's an exception here with regards to the adders or with regards to the vipers, sorry, not adders. Um, two, which have got venoms which are not uh, cytotoxic. And these would be the Berg adder, which uh, has got venom which is largely neurotoxic, and we shall see it later on, as well as the horned adder, which is found in the southern parts of the country, and has got a venom which, is got, uh, which is mildly anticoagulant. And then the next group of snakes which have got uh, medically important cytotoxic envenomation or envenoming are the burrowing asps, of which B bronze burrowing asp is the one that we've got here in Zimbabwe and is responsible for a significant number of uh, snake bites leading to cytotoxic envenomation, although a number of them largely go unreported. 
And the third uh, group of snakes which have got cytotoxic environment are the African spitting adders, uh, sorry, spitting cobras. So the moment that you've got a cobra and it spits, chances are high that the venom is going to be cytotoxic in nature. And the only spitting cobra that we have here in Zimbabwe is the Mozambique spitting cobra, otherwise known as Naja Mozambica. And out of interest, this is very uh, important to note as well. We've got some cobra which don't spit, like the snouted cobra and Anchieta's cobra, which can actually exhibit some cytotoxicity as well. Although dominantly, the cobras and uh, most elapids would have a venom which is largely neurotoxic. And then the final uh, class or group of snakes which have got cytotoxic envenomation are what are referred to as the wrinkles. And we shall talk a bit more about the species, which looks very similar to the cobra. So like I said earlier, cytotoxic refers to tissue damaging. And all these snakes that we've talked about are the groups of snakes which have been associated with, with, with this type of envenomy. We'll talk a bit about the vipers first. So the vipers I have exemplified with the puff adder. So they're normally uh, stocky snakes, which are front fangs, meaning that they've got teeth which are at the front of the mouth. And through these fangs, the venom is delivered. And here we see a puff adder with the uh, fangs showing up there. The fangs are hinged, meaning that once the snake closes its mouth, these fangs fold downwards, just like a hinge of a door. So they only come up like this in preparation for a bite. And most of these vipers have got large heads which are shaped in an ace of spades, normally, like we said earlier. So the African puff adder, or Betis arietans, as we saw earlier, is uh, one of the uh, snakes in this viper category and has been said to be responsible for most venomous snake bites, not only in Zimbabwe um, and in uh, Southern Africa, but others have argued that uh, indeed throughout the whole African uh, continent. And this snake, together with the burrowing asp and the Mozambique spitting cobra, are responsible for most venomous uh, snake bites requiring hospitalization or medical attention here in Zimbabwe. And the puff adder, a beautiful looking snake, if you look at it, is actually found throughout all regions of Zimbabwe. An interesting thing about this puff adder, it is believed to be one of the fastest snake when it, snakes when it comes to striking. And when you uh, actually have a chat with snake handlers, many of them actually pay extra attention when dealing with this particular uh, species of snakes. So one of the reasons why the puff adder is responsible for many bites is because of its coloration. You see here we've got the brownish color. Imagine this on a footpath, which has got the savanna type of sand. You would hardly be able to see it. But also they have this bad habit of uh, basking on footpaths and poor unsuspecting people then step on the snake resulting in a nasty bite. So this is an example of what a puff adder bite would look, like, would look like. And I got this picture of uh, or these two pictures from uh, Spoles and Branch, an excellent book, The Dangerous Snakes of, uh, of, of Africa. You see the, this one is showing much smaller uh, blisters but basically, this is what the type of picture that you would see, you know, when somebody suffers from cytotoxic envenomation. And just to note how serious it is, um, this is a, an untreated puff adder bite from Nigeria. And you see there's local necrosis at the bite site. And this was 20 days after the bite. So many people, patients are actually disfigured. And some may suffer permanent disabilities because they are always a result of uh, bites from these puff adders. And others have actually suffered amputations as well. So though the snake might not necessarily kill you, the venom itself 
if where it is bitten, and if, if the limb where it is uh, bitten is not attended to, it can actually have serious consequences. And as a general rule, with cytotoxic envenomation, you do not want to apply a tonique or to tie um, anything around the bite site because then it concentrates the venom in one area and the chances of losing the limb are much higher. The next uh, snake that we have is the Gabon Adder or Gabon Viper, a beautiful snake, really beautiful, very big. We had one at the snake park here in Harare, which weighed 20 kgs. That's a huge snake. And in terms of the venomous snakes of the world, it probably holds the record of having the longest fangs going up to five centimeters or even more. If you see its size and the size of the head, that's a really huge snake. And a bite from such a snake would have very serious consequences. But fortunately, these snakes are only found in the eastern uh, highlands of uh, Zimbabwe. And therefore, bites from these snakes are extremely rare. It's got a very good temperate temperament, um, very well camouflaged. So even coming across one of these snakes is uh, pretty rare. But if it does bite you, the type of symptomatology that you'd get with um, the puff adder is more or less the same with uh, what you'd get with the Gabon adder. But in addition, even with the puff adder, actually, come to think of it, you can actually also get problems with coagulation. And sometimes people continue bleeding after a bite from a puff adder, but more so from a bite of a Gabon adder. And death would result as a result or would come as a result of um, a, a, a disseminated coagulopathy. And then just a quick mention of uh, these uh, species of uh, snakes which are referred to as the night adders. And there are a few documented cases actually in Zimbabwe of people who've been bitten by these snakes. And um, in um, almost all the cases, the symptoms have been associated with uh, localized swelling and pain at the bite site with no necrosis. And in some cases, there have been reports of parexia or an increase in uh, body temperature which may be, uh, come together with uh, swollen lymph nodes or lympho, uh, lympho, lymphadenopathy. And normally the swelling subsides uh, between two to three days. And just here yeah, at the extreme, an interesting map which shows the distribution of uh, these two snakes, the snouted uh, night adder and the rhombic night adder. So you can actually tell uh, this snake species because of this V which is on the head and then also the almost uh, bullet pointed bullet pointed heads. Very feisty snakes. Interesting uh, to see the way they behave when, when they are threatened. So these also lead to cytotoxic envenomation, although most of the times it's not as serious. And then the second uh, group are the asps of which B bronze burrowing asp is the one that we come across in Zimbabwe in terms of a species with medical importance in venomation. And because the snakes look pretty harmless and cute, they are normally picked up and people then suffer serious consequences from a bite or a jab, uh, normally to the fingers. So they are back fanged and partially hinged with an unusual toxic venom, which is largely cytotoxic, but can also have cardiotoxic uh, properties in it. So it's a medium-sized snake, slow moving, moderately thick, and is found all over Zimbabwe, in all the regions of Zimbabwe. And most bites are to the digits, with some patients actually requiring amputation because of the serious cytotoxicity that occurs. So here's some pictures which show you what burrowing asps can actually do. So we see uh, here someone who was bitten by a small so scaled burrowing asp. Seems to be having necrosis around here. And then here with swelling. So most of the times if this is not treated well in this place uh, and the, the, the finger gets dark, 
it may be necessary to save the person for that uh, particular finger to be to be amputated. And this you find in a very beautiful publication by the World Health Organization on uh, guidelines for the prevention and clinical management of snake bite in Africa. So just a little bit more about this uh, burrowing asp. So bites normally occur in uh, amateur, I've put that in quotes, uh, snake handlers who may not be aware that it is not possible to safely hold this snake or handle it by the neck. And you'd find that most victims of bites from this snake exhibit one fang mark, one fang mark because the snake normally you know, thrusts itself to the, slide to the side and jabs into the, uh, into the victim. And some other symptoms, apart from the, well, there's immediate intense pain, local swelling, but there's also joint stiffness, which has been uh, reported. And occasionally we get blistering, necrosis at the bite site, regional lymphadenopathy, and no neurological symptoms have been uh, reported, although there may be some minor bleeding tendencies. The third group are the spitting cobra, of which I said earlier that we've got the Mozambique, Mozambique spitting cobra, which again is found throughout, uh, you know, it's distributed throughout the whole of Zimbabwe. The snakes are called spitting cobra because, as the name says, they, they spit, well, more of squirt. So they're able to spit venom into the eyes of victims for distances of about three meters, which is pretty significant. And as they do it, they they slightly move their heads, slightly, you know, sideways and up and down slightly in order to allow um, the venom a greater chance of getting into the unintended uh, victim's eye. And if uh, a person has been spat to and they're not spat into, like if, 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 if the venom gets into their eyes, and they are not attended to, some people have actually suffered permanent blindness. So there's another snake which resembles the Mozambique spitting cobra, which is called wrinkles. And I shall show you a picture of it in one of the slides. But it is also a spitting snake, just like the Mozambique spitting cobra. But fortunately, it is only found in the eastern highlands of Zimbabwe. And the spites from this snake are actually quite... So that's what a Mozambique spitting cobra would look like. Beautiful snake, normally salmon colored, uh, you know, salmon colored uh, uh, um, under, under part here with some black blotches. And there it is, you know, squirting or spraying its venom. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snake indeed. And here I've got some uh, pictures again from that WHO publication. So this is a patient uh, who had been spat in. And uh, this one is uh, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a Niger Negro Collis from Nigeria. And you see the intense conjunctivitis here. And then we have one uh, patient who actually lost their eyesight, their blindness from dense corneal opacity resulting from untreated black necked uh, spitting cobra five years before. So that's the Niger Negro Collis. And in terms of the cytotoxic envenomation, another beautiful picture captured by Spalls and Branch in their book. So here is uh, a young child who was beaten by the snake. You see the darkening there. The blisters, cytotoxic envenomation. And this was the final result after all the dead skin had been removed. A nasty bite indeed. And some more pictures of people who had been beaten by spitting cobra. So again, this is from a black-necked uh, cobra. But what you'd find more or less the same symptomatology with the Mozambique spitting cobra. So it's a nine-year-old girl, fourth day after the bite, ninth day after the bite. And this was after surgical debridement. And the dead skin had been removed. And then finally, in this section, we've got what is called wrinkles, another beautiful snake. So you also spread the hood, just like a cobra. The head a bit more pointed, and it's got these white blotches, normally white or, you know, this pale uh, cream color. 
and the varieties some may be bended like this one that we have but you can have ones which are black throughout and this snake is actually known for uh, shaming death which means it pretends to be dead and then he, when, he, when it's like that it's best to leave it alone uh, don't try to touch it because then it might bite you so that's the wrinkles for you so i hope you learned something um that was our cytotoxic snakes and we saw the vipers we saw the asps and we saw the spitters so again until we meet again for unit four this is professor dex otherwise known as prof toxins saying goodbye see you in the next unit enjoy your quiz and wish you the best au revoir